Hi folks and welcome to AT Lab. In this video I will show you how to wire a washing machine motor and how to properly power it with either 12 volt DC or the mains voltage. Many washing machines contain universal brushed motors. They can be easily powered either by DC or AC current. As they are very versatile, they can be applied in lots of different home appliances, such as mixers or drills. They are usually directly powered by the mains AC voltage, but in this video I'm going to tackle how to wire them in order to power the motor, even at low DC voltage. Washing machine motors can be easily recovered, so I choose to try building an electric go-kart exploiting such motors. This motor allows for quite good output power and bigger version can even reach 500 watt with the capability to bear even higher peaks. One of the main drawbacks of these motors is that they have a high RPMs and to solve this issue I show you how to control the RPMs, lowering them and rising the output torque even at low voltages. The universal motor is made out of two parts, the rotor and the stator. The stator, the fixed element of the motor, is made only of copper and iron. Non-permanent magnets are present and this is the main difference from DC motors. Instead of permanent magnets, two identical coils are placed on the magnetic core, which confines the field these two generates when powered. They are basically two electromagnets and the field is present in the stator if and only if the stator is powered. The second main component is the rotor or armor and it is the movable part of the motor. Likewise it is made by coils and is exactly like the counterpart of a DC motor. There's a collector which brings current to the rotor turns even when it is moving thanks to graphite brushes. If immersed in a magnetic field and powered, it is capable of producing a torque. When the current flows inside the rotor turns, a torque is produced due to the Lorentz force, and the rotation happens. As previously said, the difference from a DC motor is only the type of stator, which produces a magnetic field only if powered. Now let me show you the wirings and terminals of this type of motor. In common electrical appliances it is used in series excitation configuration, so the stator is connected in series to the rotor. In washing machine we need to change the rotation direction, so all turns of stator and rotor are accessible. That is why the terminal box has so many points. The motor has at least four main terminals, plus few more which are optional. Two terminals for the stator, two terminals for the rotor, and that's four. The optional ones can be two for a safe element, which is a thermal switch, that opens as soon as the motor heats up. Lastly, two for the RPM sensor, which is a coil with a magnet mounted on the rotor. In order to activate the motor, I have to identify the four terminals connected to the rotor and stator turns. The wirings are easily distinguishable by simply using the continuity test and the resistance measurement of a multimeter. Through the continuity test mode, I can quickly identify the couple of terminals through the resistance measurement mode, then I can finish the job. The first to be identified is the rotor, as between its terminals there's a quite a high resistance with respect to the others, and which ranges between a few ohms and tens of ohms, based on the orientation of the rotor. It is relatively easy to recognize, as rotating by the end the rotor, the measured resistance changes. The second element is the stator, which has a constant and much lower resistance, in the order of a few ohms.
For the optional terminals, the thermal switch resistance is practically zero in standard conditions. And finally, the RPM sensor, we have the highest resistance value, in my case over 100 ohms. Now that I explained you all the connections, let's move to a more practical thing. Starting from the myth commonly seen here on YouTube, using a washing machine motor with 12 volt is basically useless. If you connect the stator and the rotor in series and you power them, the motor turns with a pathetically low output torque, so low that you can block the shaft with just your hand. In fact, in a washing machine, the motor is powered by the mains and using just 12 volt means driving it with just 1 20th of the required 230 volt. To achieve a good output torque, the voltage has to be raised. I use a circuit I built and that you can find here on my channel. It allows me to change the voltage even starting from very low values. If you want to perform this test on a washing machine, motor or similar, be careful with the source as if you connect the motor straight to the mains, you can cause a serious damage as you wouldn't be able to keep the motor in place. Plus, if you exceed with the current, you could even burn the motor. So, how to obtain high torques with low voltages? I exploit the fact that each single element of the motor can be assessed individually. First test, I connect only the rotor which starts to turn really fast. Basically, what is missing is the field produced by the stator. For those among you that have some knowledge of DC motors, you surely know that lowering the stator field means raising the no-load RPMs. Second test. Likewise, I connect only the stator which generates the magnetic field. But with no power, the rotor is free to rotate by hand and the stator absorbs a high current, because it is just a large coil. I got more than 10 amp with only 12 volt supply. But what happens if I power the rotor and the stator in parallel with 12 volts? The motor now is in parallel excitation configuration and I cannot keep it in place by my hand. I bet you have guessed my next moves by now. As my last step, by exploiting all the connections, I power the stator with the constant voltage and change the voltage applied on the rotor, thus controlling the RPMs, this time without losing too much torque. And at this point, if the rotor is powered properly, I can get a high torque and a high number of RPMs. Keeping this in mind, I have to build an electronic circuit, a power converter, able to power in such a manner the motor using a 12V battery. Let me tell you something about the converter. It must have two outputs to drive both the stator and the rotor simultaneously. The rotor can accept higher voltages with respect to the stator, thus I need a converter that can raise the voltage from 12V namely either a boost or a back boost converter. I know, I discussed the electronic section in a rush, but don't worry, as I will upload several videos regarding the electric go-kart and the electronic converter I'm using. For now, I just perform a test on the converter, starting from a stress test in order to check that everything works with only the rotor connected. To prove what I told you before, you can see that when connecting just the rotor, the motor torque is really low, so I can block it with just my hand even if I'm providing roughly 10 amp. I hope you enjoyed the project and the video, if so please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Please keep an eye also on my social like Facebook, Telegram and Instagram and of course subscribe to the 80lab channel. See you soon, bye bye!